Okay, I call this the balancing act card trick. So I have here two piles of four cards each. We'll go ahead and just mix them thoroughly within each set of four, okay? And then we'll gather them up. Um, we'll have you tell me how would you like these stacked? Your choice, right on left, okay? Now, of all of the geometric figures out there, the triangle, I think, is considered to be the most balanced. Uh, that's why we have three-legged stools. They don't rock, <laughs> okay? So we're going to deal out the cards into a triangle to help us achieve balance here. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to give you plenty of opportunity to throw me off balance, actually. And we're going to do something that requires balance, though. It's called the leapfrog stacking. It requires balance for the simple reason that you don't want to land on top of your neighbor here. Okay, so we can go from left to right or right to left. Left to right, okay. So leapfrog stacking. This one leaps over its neighbor. <laughs> this one leaps over its neighbor. How would you like these stacked? Right on left. Okay, should we do one more of those? You want to go from left to right or right to left? Right to left. Okay, here we go. This one leaps over its neighbor. This one leaps, barely clears its neighbor. Okay, how would you like these stacked? Right on left. Okay, very good. Another great shuffle for achieving balance, actually, is to just deal out into two piles. But depending on how you stack them, you can throw things off. But it's your choice. Left on right. Okay, very good. Now, there is one shuffle of all the shuffles out there that will throw virtually every packet of cards off balance. It's called the Australian Down Under. Famous shuffle. So this is where you go down, under, down, under, down, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. The last one goes on top. Okay. Would you like to do any more of those? Not right now. Okay. But you'd like to do another left, right? Okay, that's fine. We'll do another left, right. How would you like these stacked? Left on right. Okay. Whoop, pick them up. <laughs> okay, so you're content. One last down under. You really are trying to throw me off balance, aren't you? Okay. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay. Very good. Now, let's see if you succeeded in just destroying any balance I may have had in mind for this outcome. Okay. Now, we're going to do something that has never been done before. To my knowledge, this has never been done before in the entire history of card magic. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to push off the top four cards over here. The other four right here. <clears throat> We're going to riffle shuffle these by way of the rosette shuffle. Now, all of the magicians out there go, well, that's just the Gilbreth principle. Think about it, guys. Do you honestly think a cyclic arrangement of the cards could have survived the pre-mixing that we just did? The answer is no. <laughs> this is not a cyclic packet. So what I'm showing you is indeed brand new. So I'm going to spin these, bring them together. Okay, very good. And now we're going to check to see whether we did, after all of the efforts to throw us off, did we still achieve balance? So what I'm going to do is deal one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, okay. So right now there's kind of a, a balance of sorts here. There's a symmetry here, two here and four in the middle. Now is the big reveal. Did we still achieve balance despite all of those choices made by you, the spectator, as well as that very messy rosette shuffle? Okay, so let me just get a feel for this. Uh, that's interesting. These two on the ends are in balance. Hmm. In what sense are they in balance? They have odd sums. What are the chances of that? Cards over here add up to an odd number. 
Chords over here add up to an odd number. There's no, we'll check in a second here. What about the middle? That's interesting. These four chords here add up to an even number, despite the fact that there's evens and odds among them. Okay, wow, I'd say that's some balance. Odds here as a sum, even in the middle. Of course, we need to check to see if that's even true. <laughs> Okay, odd on the ends. Well, 2 plus 5 is 7. That's odd. Odds on the end. Is that true? Queens of 12, three, and then plus 3 is 15. That's odd. What about the middle? I said that it would be a mixture of even and odds, but nonetheless, they would add up to an even number. <laughs> is that true? Do we have odds and evens? Oh, yeah, even, odd, even, odd. Okay, very good. We do have a mixture there, which is nice. Do they add up to an even number? Well, Jack's 11 plus 9 is 20, 30, 36. They do indeed. We succeeded in achieving balance despite all of the efforts of you and or the universe to throw us off balance. Okay, so how does this effect work? Well, it uses Bessie sequences of order eight and then a brand new principle regarding Bessie sequences, okay? So what you need is you need, let's say, the even value cards on the left. So these are all even, these are all odd, okay? So that's where I started, if you remember. In fact, really from here, you can now do the whole effect if you just do, do what I did, right? So we have evens over here, right? Evens, mix those, mix those, mix these, mix these. Random stack, okay? And then I talked about the triangle being a highly balanced geometric shape, which it is. And that was cover four dealing out into three piles. Well, those who have followed my channel will know that this particular dealing out will convert what we just had to a Bessie sequence of order eight. Now, it's important to pick up this packet first and then stack in reverse order to the order that we dealt them. Okay, so it's now a Bessie sequence of order eight. It is now impervious to virtually every systematic mixing procedure. We employed just three of those, three of dozens and dozens. Okay, so we did a leapfrog. Spectators free to go from left to right, right to left with this little leaping over action. Okay. This won't hurt the Bessie sequence of order eight. Um, do as many of these as you like. Maybe we'll do, uh, you know, we'll do the other direction here. Okay, very good. Uh, we did a uh, left-right shuffle, and we talked about how, you know, this one really seems to kind of bring balance to things, right? There's a symmetry there. Now, the one that will throw just about any packet structure off, except for the Bessie sequences, is a down-under shuffle. So down, under, down, under, down, under, down, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top, okay? And now here is the new principle. Push off the top half, or that would be four cards. Spin these and just bring them together. Now this is equivalent to a riffle shuffle, okay? And a lot of people will... Ah, come on. A lot of people will be assuming, oh, the Gilbreth principle right here. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, this is not the Gilbreth principle right here. <laughs> this is something no one has seen before. Okay. So when you rosette shuffle or riffle shuffle Bessie sequences in the way that I just did, there is a predictable ending structure for that. Okay. So first off, the top two are guaranteed to be an even and an odd. There's guaranteed to be two evens and two odds here, and an even and odd there. Guaranteed because of how we structured it. So now you can just reveal that and go, whoa, even and an odd. They add up to an odd, right? Even and an odd add up to an odd, and then you'll have two evens and two odds. That always add up to an even sum. So there you go. Okay, so I call this the balancing act a card effect, and I thought I would share it with you because it is employing a brand new principle that I'll be adding to my channel. 
So thank you for watching and I'll add a link in the description below to Bessie sequences in general. If you want to look into those, there's countless applications of these crazy things in card magic. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.